Hey viewers, me and team here. Welcome to the uh, final episode of Let's Play uh, Genghis Khan 2, Clan of the Grey Wolf for the Mongolian scenario. And yeah, in this part, I'm going to be taking down all of the rest of the uh, Red Army here. I think they're the Namans or Namans, I don't know. I'm, I'm not good with pronouncing things like that. So, a lot of this is just going to be chasing them around until I uh, consolidate them in a territory where they're actually willing to fight me. And, um, yeah, then it'll actually be a uh, final battle against a decent force from the enemy anyway. And it's pretty much the same uh, military troop setup I've had some, from the start. I've just picked up better generals along the way. And, um, I think, like I said in the first video, as long as you win by 12-14, you're good here. Uh, with Togorol Khan, I wanted to win sooner rather than later, because otherwise he'll die. And, uh, that sucks, because his son isn't very good. But if I continue on to the World Conquest, I'll have to wind up using his son anyway. Or, possibly, uh, myself as an heir, if, uh... Kogorol Khan lasts long enough, and uh, TMIT there is actually a good ruler. You never know, he might be another E ruler. He's even worse at war or something. That happens sometimes. So, just moving on to the final territories. Now, there's a number of things I really didn't get into with this game, and one of them is to showcase the individual battles themselves. Uh, the primary reason I didn't do that is uh, that's, I usually don't do that when I play unless I really need a hand in a given uh, war. It, it does happen where the only way to break an ambush is to hit it with my stack one and you know with a good leadership stat and just clear out the uh, confusion status as soon as possible. Or sometimes the only way that I can avoid casualties is to use my first stack or whatever and in that case I'm willing to do it but it's it takes longer so and, I, and it, it's a lot more effort so I prefer not to do it but it is a uh, an, another dynamic of this game and if you're good at it you can win these uh, territory battles much more rapidly because you can uh, avoid a lot of these a lot of tactic stuff that I've been showing you in this game, like the ambushes and whatever, because you can just blitz their stack one with your stack one. Like, you get kind of close, you wait a turn, then you tell your stack to go in, and then you get however long your combat round is to kill them off. But yeah, they decided that they would um, invade a territory there with one unit. So I, again, chose the strategy of attacking the territory with um, more troops to try to get them to run away and sure enough I got a capture. They're pretty likely to get a capture when they're running with three different legions like that. And then of course they uh, decide that they're going to uh, declare independence on me. But that's one of the reasons I don't like competent uh, generals because now that he declares independence Check out his uh, troops there, and he has absolutely nothing. So I can go reclaim that territory easily enough. But before I do that, I just got to take out the uh, last of the Namans here. I'll just call them the Namans, I guess. And that'll be that. Just uh, send one like cruddy unit over to territory 14 and win after that. So this is the final real battle of this map right here. And as you can see, the uh, uh, generals are pretty nice quality at this point. Got a bunch of A's in there. Picked up, I didn't get all of them in this run, but I got most of the good ones. And the ones I really care about the most, the guys with a really high war rating, uh, I do ultimately pick them up. So, you know, when you come to the World Conquest from this scenario, it's easy enough as it is. 
the Mongol units, which I've only had three of for this entire Let's Play, are basically the best troop type in the game, although the Samurai and, like, the Samurai is comparable, and Marmalukes aren't bad, but the Mongols are the best by far. I mean, that's why the game is named the way it is. And so here, uh, like usual, set up an ambush and completely wreck the smaller stack there. And then it's just going to be a matter of demanding surrender. Now, unfortunately, that's not going to work this time. And that happens sometimes. So if they're not willing to surrender, you just got to suck it up and decide, well, do you want to run away? Or are you going to uh, take losses attacking stack one? And there's pros and cons to each, but I usually just take the losses and get the kill over with. Very frequently you can find a way to pick up new troops quickly, especially at this later stage of the game. It's much easier to pick up troops quickly because you can just sell off some of the stuff that you've accumulated in terms of goods for the market and use that to uh, bankroll an army and buy some arms right away. So unless you're taking really heavy losses, it's not too devastating. And in this case, I mean, this is the last territory battle completely. So I don't have to worry about it. I mean, as long as I emerge victorious at all, it's good enough because the last territory has zero troops in it. So this is the invade with some minimal amount of guys and I'll win regardless. But yeah, I get to 229 here and I get a little nervous, so I just order uh, my stacks to attack. And uh, it's pretty difficult to attack a fortified enemy like that. I do have Genghis Khan. Now, unfortunately, uh, it does three iterations of the battle instead of just two, so I lost two Mongol units there. And then that's it. Two units lost, and just take them out. Nice and simple. So I'm not interested in these lesser dudes. And, yeah, my uh, relative that you start the game with passed away. He was actually younger than Togrol Khan, so you just know my days are numbered here. I have a tremendous amount of gold and food now, right when I don't need it, but hey, it's better than never. And winning's always a plus. So I just send a couple units down there. It's going to be similar to when I captured the other uh, territory declaring independence. And yeah, Tolug there goes, I can't attack because I don't have enough body points and I suck as a leader in politics. So if he was like one or two even better, he could have actually attacked. So I just move myself. But before I do that, uh, a rebellion broke out in Territory 2, apparently mismanagement, and heck, I had no army, so <laughs> I lost. So I just take the uh, one of the few competent people I have in territories and order an attack, and that'll take care of the rebellion. And move myself into territory 12. One easy fight there, and then an easy fight in uh, territory 14 for the win. Now, since I'm doing, since I did win before 1214, I actually win by the end of 1200, which is pretty decent. And you could do better, especially if you play ultra aggressively. But, you know, 1,200 pretty solid, I guess. I don't know, it depends how lucky you are, too. I got pretty lucky, so it's less solid for me than it would be if you had bad luck. But, anyway, it's, it's good enough, and you'll go to the World Conquest. If you guys are interested in me uh, continuing this Let's Play series into the World Conquest scenario, you know, or maybe you have some questions about the game and you would like me to address them as I continue it, then uh, let me know in the comments, and I'll see what I can do in terms of uh, you know making a new Let's Play or a continuation of this one, but for the World Conquest scenario. And I can go over some of the other leaders, too. But right now I'm just picking the guys that I would take to World Conquest if I were to continue. Obviously I want the A guys for war. I want my relatives, even though uh, Sang Gun there isn't so good. And then once I've taken the A guys and relatives, just other people who are decent are the uh, last slots. But realistically, the generals that come from here are really good regardless. So 
<laughs> now that I've done that, it's actually a relatively easy start compared to some of the others on World Conquest. So there's that. And yeah, there, TMIT is three years old. So, as I said before, let me know if you want me to continue this. Hope you're enjoying the LP. And uh, that'll be it for the Mongol part of the game. So, uh, the main team, signing out.